Hello, my mathematicians. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 6.4, which is all about finding common denominators and equivalent fractions. So our first part is going to be a little bit of a review because we've already talked about finding the common denominator, but then I'm going to show you how to find equivalent fractions. So we're going to look at the fractions one third and one fourth to start with. And again, there are two ways in which we can find the common denominator. One way is to multiply. So it means we're just going to multiply our two denominators together. So in this case, we're going to multiply 3 times 4, and that equals 12. So we would have a common denominator of 12. Another way that we can find our common denominator is to list out our multiples of our two denominators. So if we have 3 and 4, we're going to list out our multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Then we're going to list out our multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And then we can circle our common denominators. We have 12 and we have 24. But again, you want to find your least common denominator, so the smallest one. It'll make it easier in the long run after we add or subtract in the simplifying process. So now we have our common denominator as being 12. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just write 12. Okay. But. To find an equivalent fraction, we have to remember this important rule. Whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So whatever you do to your denominator, you have to do to your numerator. Whatever you do to your denominator, you have to do to your numerator. I'm going to say that a lot throughout the video and throughout class, just so that it gets stuck in your brain. So what do we do to 3 in order to get 12? So this is why I like listing up the multiples, because I can look and see 3. 1, 2, 3. Four. I multiplied by 4. And whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So I have to multiply my 1 by 4. And 1 times 4 is 4. So I get 4 twelfths. 1 third is equal to 4 twelfths. Then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing here. So whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So we did 4 times 1, 2, 3 times 3 to get 12. So whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So 1 times 3 equals 3. So I get 4 twelfths and 3 twelfths as my equivalent fractions. And now I would be ready to add or subtract depending on what the problem was asking for. Now we're going to look at the next page and we're going to look at 3 fourths and 1 sixth. So again, our first step is to find our common denominator. And we can do this by either multiplying or by listing out our multiples. And again, I highly suggest you list out your multiples because they'll get you a smaller common denominator to work with. So we're going to start with the multiples of 4. The multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Okay? Then our multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. So we look for our common ones, and I see that we have 12, and we have 24. So our common denominator is going to be 12. So we want to use our smallest common denominator or at least common denominator. So, again, whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. Whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So, what do we do to 4 in order to get 12? Well, 1, 2, 3. We times it by 3. Whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So I have to multiply my 3 by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 
So we get 9 twelfths as my equivalent fraction to 3 fourths. Now, what did I do to 6 in order to get 12? 1, 2. I times it by 2. And whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So 1 times 2 equals 2. So my equivalent fraction to 1 6 is 2 twelfths. So now again, if I was asked to add or subtract this, I would be able to do so because I now have equivalent fractions with common denominators. Just like yesterday, I want to see who is listening and who is not. So this t today, I would like you at the top of the page that you're working on, I would like you to put a star, okay? So just write a star at the top of the page. And then I'm going to leave you with a question to solve and or to find the equivalent fractions of and then I would like to have you rate your level of understanding using FISTA 5.